the, the constitutional issue is, is not that complicated. And I say that because I don't, I think it's very important that, um, you know, the American people not think this is a complicated legal issue that they don't have a voice in or that the Supreme Court will decide. It's a fundamentally simple but critical issue of whether or not uh, corporations are entitled to the free speech rights that people uh, literally died for. The answer is no, the corporations do not have the, this, the rights that were intended for people. Let me just tell you a little bit about, about um, the case and uh, why we're here tonight. Tomorrow in Washington, in the Supreme Court, will be oral argument. Uh, that is an argument between uh, the Federal Elections Commission, represented by uh, Elena Kagan, President Obama's Solicitor General and the Justice Department, uh, on one side arguing that the law, which has stood for a hundred years, that says corporations cannot spend money to oppose or elect candidates in an election within a particular window, 60 days before the election, uh, whether that law should stand. Uh, or, as the other side argues, a group called Citizens United, a Virginia Corporation, whether that law is unconstitutional as an as a infringement of the First Amendment rights, freedom of speech of Citizens United. Citizens United is a corporation. Uh, should uh, corporations uh, have protections of the First Amendment and freedom of speech, and therefore Congress cannot limit their campaign expenditures during elections? Citizens United is a nonprofit corporation. They made a movie uh, funded by corporations, an anti-Hillary Clinton movie, uh, during the 2008 election. Um, it's called, appropriately enough, Hillary the Movie. Um, it's in the tradition of the Swift Boat Veterans for Truth. And was the Federal Elections Commission said that's a corporate-funded campaign speech, essentially, against Hillary Clinton that violates the the law against allowing corporations to expend money. So the conservative wing of the court has been looking for an opportunity. Justice Scalia, Justice Kennedy, and Justice Thomas are on the record saying they should overrule two cases that you'll hear about, Austin versus uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, in a Michigan case from 1990, and McConnell, a 2003 case. Two cases where the court before said Corporations are unique. They're created by the state for specific purposes, and they have dangers in the political sphere. State legislatures and Congress can regulate their election activity, their campaign expenditures. Justice Scalia, Justice Thomas, and Justice you know, Kennedy are on record saying those cases should be overturned, and the law should be that uh, you cannot limit corporate money in, in election uh, in, in expenditures. The Austin. The state case that said, uh, the, this case that came out of Michigan, the Supreme Court case that said states can regulate corporation money in elections, and McConnell, which upheld the McCain Feingold uh, limitations on corporate funding only in 2003, those will be swept aside. And uh, it is not an exaggeration to say our democracy will be very different. So that's why I, uh, when I saw the Supreme Court wanted to um, reach this issue, they, announced an order at the end of June saying, you know, we could decide the case on those narrow grounds, but we're not going to. We want to hear argument about the big constitutional issue. We want briefs by July 31st. We're going to have argument on September 9th, that's tomorrow. And then we're going to decide, the, uh, we may decide the big case. Now, they may still step back and not reach it, uh, and we'll talk about that. But when I saw that, and many others saw that, people knew who, who the consequences potentially for the country. And there's been, fortunately, a great uh, almost awakening of the seriousness of this. And that's, um, I think, why many of you are here today. And I want to say just how, how pleased I am to see so many of you here today. Uh, if, if, if I wish this were going, out, going on around the country, where citizens were coming out to learn more about this case and what they can do to try to uh, either prevent the consequences that do sound dire, but I don't think I'm exaggerating. Um, or to remedy them if they happen. The brief that I filed in the Supreme Court is called an amicus curiae brief. That's a Latin word lawyers like to use, which simply means friend of the court. And it's an old tradition of being, when you're not a party to the case, you can still have input to give the court your views. And that's you know, the fundamental issue about 
whether corporations have these rights in the first place. Uh, let's not talk about you know, what kind of rights, what sort of limitations on speech, that sort of thing. The fundamental question is, well, hold it. We're talking about a, a, an entity that only exists because we, the people, passed laws that said corporations can exist and, and be used for good reasons in the economy and nonprofit sector and others. But where, how did they get into the Bill of Rights? So those are the issues we're trying to bring. Until 1978, there was 1976, 1978, a couple of cases were decided. Before that, there was no such thing as corporate speech. It didn't exist in the Constitution. Uh, in fact, there was case law specifically saying that commercial speech is not included in the First Amendment. That case was overturned in the late 1970s. Um, an a, a, a act of judicial activism that you don't usually hear about from the conservatives complaining about judicial activism. That case was overturned and the notion of commercial speech was created. It gathered steam over the, through the 80s and 90s where the number of democratically enacted laws were struck down. Interestingly, in 1980 is an example, Central Hudson and PG&E, two big utilities, one in New York, one in California, they both went to court saying it was a violation of their free speech rights to prevent them from advertising, to promote energy use. And this, that law was passed in California and, and New York. Um, there were a lot of regulations trying to say, well, we need to conserve energy. It's just that we have an energy crisis. Uh, and the utility corporations challenged that and said, you can't tell us we can't advertise that people should use more energy because, of course, they'd make more money. This continued, gathering steam, a case I was involved in in the Attorney General's office in the 1990s related to the tobacco regulations. You might, have, might remember the tobacco litigation um, a lot of states were doing at the time and trying to regulate marketing that targeted kids, um, deceptive uh, concealment of health hazards, of cigarette smoking, just a, a string of outrageous conduct by the tobacco corporations. We passed. Uh, regulations saying they can't do that. They sued, went all the way to the Supreme Court. Laura Lloyd versus Riley. The Riley is Tom Riley, the Attorney General. Started under Scott Harshbarger. Tom Riley um, had the misfortune to be the Attorney General whose name is now in the case, Laura Lloyd versus Riley. But I think it's a badge of honor that you went to the Supreme Court fighting all the way, as did uh, Frank Bellotti in a big campaign finance case that we can talk about. Um, but the point is, these cases went up to the Supreme Court, which in an activist way created First Amendment rights that never existed before. This case that will be argued tomorrow is the, is the culmination. If you believe that corporations can't be told that they have to advertise in ways that promote rather than, uh, rather than harm the public interest, if you think that's a First Amendment right for a corporation, then the natural culmination of, of that is, well, then how can you stop them from talking about something even more serious, which is elections? And that's, that's the state we find ourselves in. The brief also pointed, so the brief tried to point out, this is a new doctrine, didn't used to exist. It's a doctrine without constitutional foundation, um, but also to try to remind the court, what is a corporation? What are we talking about here? Uh, and um, again, it's a non, not a controversial Point. It's not disputed uh, in the law. A corporation is an artificial entity that only exists because state laws allow them to exist. So, you know, we can form a group, or I'm going to get a group together and be a corporation and take advantage of all the, the things that follow from being a corporation, limited liability and the perpetual existence and things like that. You can only do that by following the laws of the state, registering it, registering every year, it's, it, it is a pure creature of law, is what, what it's called in the, in the law book. So um, if we remember that, and if judges remember that, I think the case is easy. The cre you know, things that only exist because the state legislature said you can use this vehicle, this, this organizational form, uh, you can't bootstrap that into the most fundamental right we have as a nation in free speech. And this, this has been a long time coming, and it'll be a long time getting back to what I think uh, is the appropriate uh, constitutional analysis. This case has set a record for briefs, for amicus briefs, uh, more than any other case ever in the Supreme Court. Citizens groups are alarmed, real citizens groups uh, are alarmed. Um, they're, they're speaking up. Uh, you know, the newspapers are speaking up.
people are recognizing that the court has uh, gone to the edge of a very significant uh, development, and we hope to pull them back. If they do pull back, there's still a lot of work to do. All those cases I described over the last 20 years, and a lot more, uh, are basically trump cards. You can, you can work, and you can work, and you work, and you get a good law passed. Uh, tobacco regulations are saying that if you use milk that comes from growth hormone cap, you have to put it on the label. Those laws have been overturned. So the corporations have a trump card that every time you try to regulate speech, this is the ultimate trump card.